Coming up on this special edition of Ask Mike, we're going to show you all those super secrets to using the Super Slicer. You'll learn how to make extra fancy waffle cuts and even see how easy it is to make fancy garnished party trays. Now here's the host of our show, Mike Levy. Hi, I'm Mike Levy, and this is Charlie McClay. You know him. He brought us the Super Slicer. Now, everyone's been asking, can we really make the same things in our own kitchens with our Super Slicer as Charlie made in our show? So I invited Charlie over to my house. We're here in my kitchen, along with our camera crew and lighting crew. And look at these beautiful creations, and we can make this ourselves, right? Absolutely, Mike. You see the way we did all these beautiful slices? We did the oranges, the tomatoes. We did the cucumber. Beautiful. We did the yellow squash. Shred the red cabbage. Mushrooms, carrots, peppers. Mm -hmm. wafer thin slices of onion and that's only the beginning Mike. I like the onions, no tear onions, this is great. Onions without tears, we're going to chop onions look nice and finely, you oh, see the way we that. did the celery? Beautifully, perfectly chopped. You chop down the tomatoes for tacos and salads. Mm -hmm. and you see down here, this is uh, peppers for stir fry. This is my favorite part. This is great for parties, uh, little carrot sticks and zucchini sticks without having to spend hours with a knife. This They're is perfect. ideal for dips, Mike. And you see the way we did the kiwi Beautiful. fruits? And we chopped that fine red cabbage. Mm -hmm. We did the peppers. And as I said, fine chopped onions without tears. And they're pretty chopped. Okay, we're ready for some super slicer secrets. Let's do well, it. Let's Come show on, you, Mike. Now, remember, the first thing to Remember is there are no slides to go in or out. Mm -hmm. It's a self-contained unit. It's a professional machine. No attachments to lose. Good. See the dial on the side? Mm -hmm. That's all you need to do. You okay. turn the dial. When it's set at number one, you're going to get a paper thin slice. Okay, number one's paper thin. Number two is wafer thin. Okay. Number three and number four are medium slices. Got it. Number five and number six are thick slices. Got it. But look, Mike, turn to number seven. You see the blades appear? Oh, there are the large teeth come up. They large blades. make the French fries. And do oh, all the coarse chopping. I've got to see the French fry maker. But That's look, great. turn once again. And you see the small teeth? They do the fine dicing and chopping work in your julienne strips. That's going to be great. I can't wait to see that. But Mike, what I'm going to f start by doing is we're going to turn the setting okay. to number one. Okay, say number one now. First. Setting number one for a wafer thin slice. And do remember, you're going to always use the safety holder. Okay. The safety holder turns everybody into a professional. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't buy a car without brakes or a knife without a handle. You see the way we use the holder from the top of the machine to the bottom? Right. And one thing that we're guaranteed to get here, Mike, is a perfect professional result down to the last little piece. Look at There's that. They're the perfect. Done. This would take you hours. Look at how perfect it is. It's really perfect. Look at that. And Mike, if you want to make potato chips, uh -huh. why buy the store-bought ones when you can get them yourself? To cut your potato in half. Okay, cut it in half first. This is a good hand here now. Pop it on the safety holder. Mm -hmm. Start at the top and go from the top to the bottom. And now we can slice the potatoes down for potato chips. Ah. And you're going to get that perfect result every time. They're perfect. And you left the skins on the outside. Huh? You know why I did that, Mike? I read one time that all the vitamins and goodness are under the skins of the potato. And if oh. you peel the potatoes, you peel the vitamins away. Now look, they look so natural, too. I'll be your sous chef yeah, here. Pop I'll those over there. For you. Okay. And Mike, what about this job here? All the Everybody onions. hates doing these. Yeah, they make Smell your hands, kind of stained fingers. Right. Well, instead of standing there with half an onion collapsing between your fingers, we're going to pop it on the holder again. But okay. remember when you peel your onions here. Here's a little tip for you, Mike. Peel the onions, leave that root end on. That okay. actually holds the onion together. Oh, I see. So you don't see now I always cut that off. So leave it on because the safety holder grips in there like that. Absolutely. And now Perfect. just watch how we get those perfect slices of onion. It could be liver and onions, it could be steak and onions, hamburgers and beef burgers. You're going to get that perfect result every time that you do the job. Look at that. They're Just perfect. watch this, Mike. Just look at that. You see all of those slices out of one onion? It's like it's a restaurant. Quick. It's That's economical, great. Mike. It's really simple and straightforward. Let's okay. pop that over I'll, there. I'll do it for you here. I'm trying to help here. He's doing a pretty good job here. <laughs> now, cabbage for coleslaw. Okay. Cabbage for coleslaw. Now, when you cut your cabbage, cut your cabbage through the root piece here. Now you can cut it into halves or quarters depending on the size. But so always now, remember. Now you're preparing this for the safety holder. So yes, always remember it's got to be able to fit inside the holder. And you put it on the stem side of the cabbage. That's right. And always cut it down to size. Okay. And now you can shred down your cabbage for your coleslaw. You'll find the cabbage comes out of there nice and finely shred right the way through from top to bottom. This job would take you hours with a knife, Mike. But just wow, look at look that. Wow, look at that. 
Just it's get perfect. that perfect result every time. Now this was on setting number one, right, it, Charlie? It could be setting one or it could be setting two. Okay. Now you can be creative, Mike. You know, whatever suits you. You That's know, you like good. it coarser, you like it finer, you do it as you like it. Very versatile. Now what I'm gonna do now, Mike, is Sorry, my job here. Let's go around here and let's turn the dial right the way around. We're gonna get it to setting number three now. Okay, setting three now. Here setting we go. three. Now I'm gonna take a mushroom. Now mushrooms, you know, if you're doing sauces or pizza toppings, pop the mushrooms on the guard. See the teeth there? Now remember, this guard holds big things and tiny things. This you, is great. You can load the guard up, Mike, uh, with whatever will fit in there. You can put two, three, four radishes inside I there. saw that. When you do the radishes on the show, you put three radishes on the inside. Absolutely. Cut them all at the same time. And look at this, Mike, for perfectly sliced mushrooms from top to bottom for pizza toppings and sauces. Look at that. They are. They're perfect. Look at those. Absolutely perfect. And Mike, you know okay. when you're doing peppers, mm -hmm. when you do your peppers for your uh, for stir fry or for pizza toppings, now remember that's what, what we did here? You went too fast on the show. How do you get the seeds out of the pepper? That's what I want to well, know. Let me show you here. You always make sure that the peppers go on the guard this way. So the okay. stem side out. Stem side Absolutely. out. Absolutely. Okay, got it. That's now, all we've got to do now, Mike, is just do the first couple of cuts. Right. When you've done the first couple of cuts, then can you see what we do here? Uh-huh. We actually remove those seeds from out of the center. We Great. throw those away. My job. I'll take care of it. We don't need them. I see. So it kind of like automatically helps you to get the seeds out. Absolutely. And Pretty remember good. with the guard, the only secret is to start at the top of the machine to the bottom. And when you get down to this last piece here, Mike, you don't waste that uh -huh. piece. You push the button. Pushing the button, you feed everything down to the end. That's now, great. You couldn't slice the these peppers down any quicker. They're beautiful. Or Look at how easier than that. They're perfectly cut. I like this. Isn't that fabulous? Save these for later because we use them for stir fry. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Save all the props here. Well, without a doubt. And Mike got I've a got hungry some, crew. I've got some kiwi fruits here, and I oh, love yes. kiwi fruits. Now this is hard to cut because it's a very soft fruit. Absolutely. And if you're doing a fresh fruit salad, mm -hmm. nothing looks nicer in a fresh fruit salad than a kiwi fruit. You know, if you're decorating or garnishing, let's mm -hmm. pop this one on the top of the machine. Here, uh -huh. okay, and then just pop the guard on. Oh, I okay. see. Okay, good. Good hint. <laughs> if you're decorating or garnishing, Mike, if you're doing a cheesecake, what nicer way to slice the kiwi Beautiful. fruits than that? Isn't that fantastic? This is. These are very oh, hard to cut. Tremendous. Very hard to cut with a knife because they're such a soft, fresh fruit. Absolutely, Mike. Now, what about tomatoes? Tomatoes. Now, tomatoes. They're right. a real difficult thing to slice. What I'm going to do here is we're going to turn the setting now to number four. Number four. Okay. Remember, though, you can choose whatever setting you like. As my granny always this. said, mm -hmm. the higher the price. The, the thinner, thinner the slice. slice. <laughs> Absolutely. Now just watch and see how we do the no, tomatoes here. No, wait a second. Here. What side are you supposed to put the safety holder on? Wait, is it this Mike, side or this side? It doesn't matter whether it's this side or this side, but don't put it on that way. Yeah, because you always right. go from the top of the tomato to the bottom. I see. Whichever way, or the bottom to the top. Whichever way you want to do it, Mike. Got but it. look at this. You see the way we slice these to perfection right the way through from one end to the other? I see. Then you couldn't slice a tomato look at that. any better than that. And look, the seeds, really everything is, they're right fabulous. directly in the middle. Look at how perfect yeah, that slice is. They're in the center where they belong. And, exa and each each two, they're exactly the same thickness. They're perfect. Okay. Oh, you get a perfect result, Mike. Now, you know that I did the cabbage for the coleslaw? Right. I've got some red cabbage here. Oh, now, no. red cabbage is great. Mm -hmm. For salads, you can do lettuce, of course, the same way for salads. And of course, in Britain, mm -hmm. we love pickled red cabbage. Mm -hmm. You can pickle the cabbage, you can shred it this way in seconds, as simply and as easily as that. And coleslaw, too. Oh, for coleslaw, if you like your cabbage coarser or finer, it's entirely up to you. I tasted your granny's recipe for coleslaw. Oh, Mike, I'm going to hey. show you my granny's recipe. You're going to show us? In a little while from now, Mike. Now, let me tell you something. This is something you have to experience. His coleslaw recipe, his granny's coleslaw recipe, tastes just just like the restaurant coleslaw. I mean, it's fantastic. No, Mike. No, it doesn't. It tastes better, Mike. It okay. It tastes better. And let me give you a little tip here as well. You know, if you do any stir fry, right? What oh, you I can like do, we've got some yellow squash here. Mm -hmm. If you put the yellow squash or mm -hmm. uh, any fruit or vegetable onto the guard on an angle, you see uh -huh. what we've done here? Right. Long ways. So Long like, ways. Mm -hmm. Now, watch what happens. Instead of getting those round cuts, you actually get those long cuts which are great for steaming or for oh, stir fry. I see. Oh, that's how they do that in the restaurants then. I've that's seen this right. done before. This is great. Now you can do it at home. I like that. 
Okay, I'll put this aside here. Put that to one side. It might, and of course, fresh fruit salads. Mm -hmm. You want to slice down apples. We did the kiwi fruits. You can do strawberries. You can do oranges. We've called this apple here, Mike. You oh, yeah. That, yeah. You used the juicer for that, right? We did, Mike. And I'll show you how we call the apples with mm -hmm. the juicer in a moment. Okay. But first of all, it might be apple fritters. And I know you've got a food dehydrator. You dehydrate food, Mike. And it's great to dehydrate apples. They turn out great. you got to take the cores out first. The hardest part is taking the center out there. Absolutely. And it's a healthy way to eat as well. Yes, it is. So if you're doing apples, Apple fritters, you're dehydrating apples, you want to slice them down with the cores out, there's the job done. Look at, they're perfect. Very Isn't that good. simple? Very good. Isn't so that easy? So you core them first and then just uh, put them through the super slicer. Absolutely. Very nice. I'll put now, Mike, what we're going to do now mm -hmm. is we're going to turn the dial once more. Okay. Now, when we turn the dial this time, what's going to happen is we're going to get to setting number seven. That's the large teeth, the upright blades. Oh, I know that what that's for. The French fries. Now, you, I was surprised at this. Remember on this show when Charlie sent me to the refrigerator to get a bag of frozen French fries and said that by the time that I got back, he would have the French fries all prepared with the super slicer. I'll never forget that. That was fantastic. Well, and Mike, you really did come through too. <laughs> absolutely, Mike. And you know something? I can't see any point in buying tasteless frozen French fries when you can make them yourself. Okay, now do it slow. Everybody has got to I see how to do this. I want you to see this, Mike. Now, when you put your potato on the safety holder, mm -hmm. if you put it on once again, as we did with the squash, at an angle, okay, at an you're angle. going to get long French fries. Uh -huh. If you put your potato on straight down, you're going to get short French fries. Uh -huh. But then again, you can do whatever suits you. Okay. It's your kitchen, it's your potatoes, they're your fries. My super slicer. Your super slicer, do what you want. But okay. it's so simple and so straightforward and easy. Remember what I said here about using the full length of the machine from uh -huh. the top to the bottom. Okay. Always use the full length of the machine. Good, firm, brisk strokes. There's no strength or skill required, Mike. All you need to do is use the full length of the machine look at that. and look at those. I can't believe it. And the best Best thing about it, uh, look at there. Each and every one of them are exactly the same shape. They look so professional. I know. BSS. That's right, Mike. Everyone stamped BSS. It's British standard size. They all cook at the same time. <laughs> now you can now you can fry these if you want to in vegetable oil, or you can put them in the oven and sprinkle uh, seasonings on them and cook them in the oven Absolutely, too. Absolutely, right? Mike. If you okay. if you like oven fries, pan mm -hmm. fries, entirely up to you. I like. Now them. when you're doing carrot sticks, remember they're perfect. I'm sorry. <laughs> no problem, Mike. Remember you like the dips. Mm -hmm. Now can I give you a little tip here with the carrots for dips? You can take your carrot and cut them into little uh, pieces so that they fit on the guard this way here. Oh, so okay. you cut them to the so, maximum length of the carrot spears that you want to come out. That's I right. See. So okay. now we can actually go down lengthways. And you see what we uh -huh. do here, Mike? Well, it's, it's real the same simple, same real straightforward, look at that. And real easy. Just, just like, look all at these that. just come apart here, Mike. It's real simple and straightforward. Now, can you imagine anyone out there that's ever made these for a party? you got to start like the night before. And then if you do start the night before, they're terrible the next day. But now they're they're perfect. You mean you made it like two seconds? This two seconds, great. Mike. And of course, you can do your zucchini the same way. See what we've done again with this uh, angle on the guard, just okay. so that we get the length there. Uh huh. And look at that. There they are. They're perfect. They're perfect <laughs> each and every time. Look at that. Zucchini. Uh, for zucchini strips. They're perfect. Great for dips. This is great. I like this. It's fabulous, Mike. And I want to show you something we didn't show you on the show. Okay, good. This is how you dice your vegetables. Oh, make the little cubes of... That's of, right. Little, oh, of potatoes. This potato. is like you're at a restaurant. Dice I like that. potato. Now, what we're going to do first of all is we're going to cut the potato in half. This okay. just makes the job a little easier. Mm -hmm. We pop it inside the guard. With the flat side With going... That's okay. right. Now, uh -huh. watch carefully here. We just make a series of even cuts. Can you see how we're doing this here, Got Mike? Uh -huh. Right the way across the potato. Right. It's that simple and it's that easy. Well, how's it going to turn out to be little cubes, though? Well, watch, Mike, because now we're going to cut against the cuts that we've just made. Okay. Do you follow me here, Mike? So you have the big teeth up, like the same ones you use for the french fries. That's right. But now as we go down, can you see what happens here? Look Just at that. Check those out, They're Mike. They're little cubes. I can't believe it. Look at Isn't that. Isn't that fabulous? And they're all the same size. I like that. This is People are going to think you bought this at a store. This is Absolutely, perfect. Mike. perfect. Look at that. And Mike, mm -hmm. you know if you do like tacos and you right. want to shred down the lettuce, mm -hmm. you can shred the lettuce the same way as we did the red cabbage or the white cabbage. Or you can chop the lettuce. Once again, remember, you cut your lettuce in half through the core. Uh -huh. Always use the safety holder. And now we can go down and look at this in no time at all. 
How's that, Mike? For chopped lettuce. Looks perfect. This is exactly what it looks like at a restaurant when you order a chopped salad. Now it's you can make perfect, it yourself. Isn't it? It's perfect. Now we chopped the lettuce, Mike, but what about chopped onions? Oh, great. Yeah, those make you cry. Yeah. I've tried that before. I, we tried to make tacos. It, tears are coming down. You kind of lose your appetite. Hey, Mike, you just got a little, there we go, Mike. Oh, thank you very much. No there. problem. <laughs> now, this is the way you chop down an onion. And do you see how quickly and easily this is done? And this is a coarse chop. If you want a fine chop, I'll show you how to do a fine chop in a moment. This is great for stews, great for... Uh, um, Stir fry it's great for, Mike, for soups. as well. Yeah, and soups, absolutely. Now, now, why doesn't it make your eyes tear, like if you do it but well, with a knife? Well, you know, the nice thing is, of course, the best way to chop an onion without tears is as fast as you possibly can, as we all know. That's true. But remember when you use this guard, it's those irritants and juices and acids that would normally go in your eyes, they get caught inside the guard, so you can chop the onion straight inside. So this has a lot of... This is pretty important, That's the safety hold. Don't great. forget the loops Mike remember we showed you before how you can clip the machine over your sauce but or basin and chop the onion straight right, inside. Go directly to it that's right but what about a tomato here tomato a tomato you know I've been here a few weeks here now Mike it's a tomato <laughs> now listen carefully you want to chop we these like your accent <laughs> don't don't lose it Charlie we're gonna chop these tomatoes down here Mike <laughs> and uh, when we chop them down it could be for tacos it could be for salads just look at how easily that's done you know that food processor you had Mike yeah I tried that one and what Whoa, would you have got? It's perfect. I tried this in the food processor and I got tomato juice. I don't know. It doesn't work. Tomato puree. It's it looks great. pretty good to me. Eh? What do you think? <laughs> now, there's perfect. only one last thing we've got to do now, and that's the cleanup. Oh, yeah. How do you clean this thing up? It's so simple and straightforward. All you've got to do is turn the machine over. Right. You open the the little gate here, and ah. you can rinse it under the faucet. Okay. And Mike, don't forget it's also dishwasher safe. Uh -huh. Top shelf of the dishwasher. I always advise top shelf. Great. And give it a rinse, and the cleaning's done. It's that quick, it's that simple, and it's that easy. And remember, I've only scratched the surface here. I haven't begun to show you all the things you can do, but I think we've set your imagination alive here, Boy. Mike. But now, show us the coleslaw recipe. But Mike, I'm going to show you the coleslaw recipe in a moment. But before I do that, look, let's turn this dial just once more. You see those small teeth? Okay. The big teeth made the big fries. Now, if big teeth make big fries, what does small teeth make? Small fries? It's pretty easy, isn't it, Mike? There's no prizes for guessing. You're definitely with the program here. You've got the idea. Okay. You know, when you go to a restaurant, let's do a carrot here. Remember that angle so we get the length? Yes, yeah. right. When you go to a restaurant and you see the carrots done this way, uh -huh. you don't think that the chef sat there doing that with a knife. Well, that's the julienne. Uh -huh. That's right. He'd be there for four weeks on one carrot to get them all perfect. It's perfect. It is but perfect. In the same way as we did the carrots, of course, you can do your zucchini for your zucchini sticks. You can do cucumbers and beetroots for salads and get that perfect result. They are. Potatoes for shoestrings. Look at that. Isn't that fabulous, Mike? Very professional. And remember what I was saying about tuna fish and celery? Oh, right. You know the way you like, you like to chop the celery down really fine for tuna fish and celery? Tuna fish sandwiches, you got to have chopped celery. It's great like that. Now, you see the way we did this with the celery, Mike? When you use your celery, always take a whole bunch of celery mm -hmm. and you place the guard at the end here. On the stem. On the stem. Got it. And now all we've got to do is remember, as I said before, the top of the machine to the bottom up and down. You want to chop down the celery for your tuna fish and celery. You've chopped it down nice and finely, right down to the last little piece. The job's Look done in that. seconds. It's done in no time at all. Now that would have taken a long time to do. Look at how perfect now that, that is. That is tremendous, isn't it, Mike? Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Perfect for tuna sandwiches. This is pretty good. Pretty good, eh, Mike? And you yeah. know something? You know my granny's fav famous uh, coleslaw recipe? Oh, time for the coleslaw recipe well, Mike, now? Mike, we're on our way. Good, what okay. What we do here, I'm going to use a bowl because oh. we're going to shred some cabbage into the bowl. When I say shred cabbage, Mike, mm -hmm. you can shred it this way, you can shred it coarse or fine, you can do it as we did with the lettuce, oh, but then okay. you can chop the cabbage down using the small teeth in the same way as we did the celery, and that's the way I like cabbage for coleslaw. Now, be sure and point this out. We have on the side of the super slicer, there's little grooves, so if it's right over the bowl, no mess. You can he easy clean up because it goes right inside the bowl. That's like right, it. and you can actually prepare the food straight inside. All you do is just go from the top to the bottom, from the top to the bottom. Uh -huh. It's that quick, it's that simple, and it's that easily. And you see how we chop the cabbage Ooh, nice, nice and finely that way. Perfect, okay. But remember, Mike, the coarse chopped onion? Yes, right. Well, we want to chop an onion fine. And when I say fine, I do mean 
really, really fine. Uh -huh. And don't forget, leave the root on the end here. Right. It holds all those leaves together. Okay, so the safety holder goes inside the end with the stem on it, okay? Absolutely. Got it. Once again, you can chop the onion straight into a basin or a saucepan or a stew pan. Mm -hmm. It might be meatloaf. We're going to chop an onion nice and finely. Okay. You know, it could be liver and onions, it could be ground meat from the top of the machine to the bottom. And when you get to that last piece, you don't waste it, you press, press the button. The button. Mm -hmm. It's real simple and straightforward. And there's the onion chop, Mike. That's finely chopped. Can you see this? That Look at this. That is finely chopped onion. Now that would take a long time with a knife. You'd be so tired, you'd go out to dinner. <laughs> That's what I've done before. It's and perfect. Mike, don't forget, you can plant that little piece in the garden, a little rain, a lot of luck. You'll have another onion next year. Oh, come on, Charlie. Oh, and Mike, onion. My granny's favorite coleslaw recipe. We've got some cabbage here. Are we gonna do it now? We're gonna put some onion in there, Mike. And I'm gonna show you how to do that in a moment. We've gotta grate some carrot, and you're gonna see the chef super slicer grater. Okay, and all right. that's the, one of the best graters in the world, Mike. Okay, I'm ready. You're ready, we're gonna do that for well, you. Well, let's next. just do, can't we just do the coleslaw recipe now? Now, if you've ever been to a party where someone is sent out for an expensive deli platter or one of those fruit and vegetable arrangements that have been professionally cut up, look at the, how beautiful this is. The difference here is that Charlie made all this in about 10 minutes with the super slicer and all the attachments. I mean, look at the radishes. Look at how perfect that is. Little Van Dyke cuts and look over here, the mushrooms. And Charlie, what I want to know is how did you make these waffle cuts? This is a beet here that you've made a little waffle cuts. It has holes in it. You can actually see through. How did you do that? Mike, I'm going to show you this. This is our decorating and garnishing fancy waffle cutter. Good. And then you get started. I'm going to save this no for later. No problem here, Mike. The crew's going to love this. Mike, any good cook or chef will tell you it's not just what you serve in a kitchen, it's how you serve it. If you mm -hmm. make your food look good, it tastes better. Mm -hmm. Preparation good. and presentation. Okay. Now, I'm going to use a potato here. Now it could be potatoes, it could be carrots, cucumbers and beets. Now to make those holes, all you do is use the safety guard, right. start at the top of the machine and go to the bottom. Okay. When you come back to the top, give the guard a half a turn and go down. I see. You okay. got this? So to each time... Half a turn, that's right, Mike, and down. Got it. You've got it. That's how simple and easy it is. And that's ah. the way, can you see, you're going to get those fancy waffle cuts. There they are. Look at that. They're perfect. Look at all the little holes. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. You can see right through it. So you turn it so the cuts kind of crisscross then. Absolutely. Now, you can do carrots and cucumbers and beets the same way. Now when you do your carrots or your beetroots, mm -hmm. let me suggest, Mike, that what you do first is just part boil the carrots. Uh -huh. And you can see how you get that perfect there result. There they are. Look at this. Each and every time you look do how, the job. But they look so perfect. They look like you bought them from a caterer. They look so perfect. Look at that. They really do look tremendous, don't they? Mm -hmm. And remember, as I said before, Mike, it's not just what you serve, it's the way you serve it. You're going to get those perfect results every time. Beautiful. If you want to make bread and butter pickles, mm -hmm. Don't turn it, Mike. Just go straight up and down this way, and you'll do your pickles for your oh, bread yeah. and butter pickles. That's, That's right. How simple. That's easy. You look, it is. look at that. You marinate them, pickle them. They'll look just like the bottom of the store. They look professional. That's pretty good. I it's, like that. It's marvelous, Mike. And if you drop those uh, potatoes, remember in the deep fry, they come mm -hmm. out crispy and golden brown. The children love them. If they won't eat their vegetables, do them that way. You, you got a point there. Make the it look good. The vegetables, Mike, not the children. Come on, Charlie. They play with them for two or three days before they throw them away. Now, what about this super grater? Let me show you the grater. And Mike, it's the greatest grater in Great Britain, this one. Oh, come on. How does it work? Mike, I see you've still got one of these old metal graters in the kitchen here. Yes, yes, yes. Well, you know the problem here, Mike? Fingernails and knuckles. Ew, yes, I yeah. know. I told you, I'm sure they're made by the people that make... You know, the band-aids, the bandages. Uh -huh. They call it creating your own market, Mike. The nice thing about the Chef Secret Super Grater is it's got a coarse side, uh -huh. it's got a fine side, it won't rust, it won't tarnish, and you don't need to worry about grating your knuckles because oh, you good. can use the grater and the safety holder together. Ah, okay, so the safety holder you use with other parts of the kit as well. Absolutely. Now, you can grate down your cheeses and your chocolate, your nutmeg and horseradish, the Look zest of oranges and lemons for baking, and you're going to go down to the last little piece. Your hands are safe. You want to do carrot cake? It's fabulous. Do you see the way the job's done there, Mike? Look at now. This looks just the right consistency for your secret coleslaw recipe. Are we ready yet? Everybody here wants to know how to make restaurant coleslaw. Come Mike, on now. 
my granny's secret coleslaw recipe and yes. i don't give this to everybody i don't let everybody know but in a moment from now i'm going to share it with you but first of all mike zucchini for zucchini bread oh, do yeah. your zucchini for your zucchini bread that way and remember the hard cheeses like parmesan and romana <laughs> yeah you can you can grate those just as simply look and at that just as easily it's perfect absolutely perfect it really is fabulous mm -hmm. now don't forget that's the coarse grater mike mm -hmm. let's turn it over now and you see on this side here right we've got the fine grater. Okay, little holes with kind of little teeth all around That's them. right, man. Now what I'm going to do is I'm mm -hmm. just going to give this a little rinse here, Mike. Okay. And there we go. That's the way we do it. And you see here, mm -hmm. the fine grater, this is the one that you use when you want to zest oranges or lemons for your baking. You'll do nutmeg in the same way. And right. you know what happens with the metal grater? Everything gets clogged inside. You've got to yeah, poke you and up. prod the pieces out. So how do you do with this one here? It's just Give it a tap, and can Ooh, you see there? That smells so good. I wish you could smell it. Mmm, this That's smells the so good. for baking. It's perfect. This is great. Remember, Mike, when it comes to food preparation, mm -hmm. if it pleases the eyesight, it stimulates the appetite. It's not what you serve, it's the way you serve it. Got a point there. I like this. Now this would be impossible to do with a regular knife. This is great, Charlie. Mike, how do you do this? Mike, you're gonna learn now how to get spring vegetables all the year round. Let me show you how. It's real simple and easy. It's called the spiral cutter, Mike. It's the chef's secrets decorating and garnishing tool. Okay, good. And this spiral is the, cutter. The spiral cutter. And what you must do is this. Mm -hmm. If you're doing a potato, take the tip off. You're gonna get a flat working surface. Now you're gonna peel and trim your vegetables first. Now I'm using the chef's secrets super peeler here. And believe you me, this is the best peeler that money can buy. Used by folk that have arthritis and rheumatism and find it difficult to grip and use a regular peeler. That's clever. You'll peel your vegetables in seconds. It looks so different. It's fabulous. Uh -huh. Now, when you've peeled your vegetables, Mike, take the spiral cutter and push it down into the center. Okay. Now you wind it round in a clockwise direction. It has sort of a screw thing in the That's top. That's right. There. And once this screw thread has a grip, then off you go. You'll find that the more times you turn... Look at that the more spiral shapes you're going to get. You're going to do potatoes and carrots <laughs> and cucumbers and beets. <laughs> and don't forget, Mike, I told you, you'll eat spring vegetables all the year <laughs> round at no extra cost. But seriously, what do you do with a potato like this when you've got it? I was going to ask you the same thing. Well, I'll, <laughs> I'll give you a few ideas, Mike, mm -hmm. and I'm sure you'll have some ideas of your own. That's true. Take a large potato, do it this way. Uh -huh. Stretch it out, wrap it around the roast. Pop it in the oven, baste it with the juices from the meat. Now, I wonder what you're supposed to do with this after you make this spiral, but on the show, Charlie showed me an example of how he deep fried one of these springs made out of a vegetable, and it looked great. It was a great decoration, and you even put a tomato in the middle, didn't That's you? That's right, Mike. It's the one I call the potato rosette. It's how do you do that? Let me show you what happens here. Take the potato, mm -hmm. and all you need to do is pin the two ends together with a wooden cocktail stick. With a toothpick. Oh, that's right, a toothpick, that's right. And then drop it into the deep fry. Ah, okay. Now, when it comes out, it's crispy and golden brown. It's set in this position. Now, uh -huh. you might well put that fancy tomato in the center. I see, okay. You get the idea here, Mike? Uh -huh. So it's a bit more firm, of course, that's when it's been firmer deep fried. One, that's right. Let's, that's what we're going to do here. Mm -hmm. we're just, uh, just to give you the idea, cucumbers and beets in exactly the same way. And if you can imagine that that potato is now crispy and golden brown, mm -hmm. straight from the deep fry, you can interleave your cucumbers or beets around the edge. This is going to make a fabulous centerpiece. And when the guests arrive and they see these, one of so the clever. first questions they ask you is, yeah. how on earth did you do it? They will think you've just returned from gourmet school. I mean, look at how perfect this looks. Well, you can great. tell them, Mike. Tell, just tell them it's a professional secret. You'd That's rather right. not say, absolutely. <laughs> it's a chef's secret, right? It's a chef's <laughs> secret. Do carrot the same way and beetroots. Oh, nice. Now, a little tip for you. You know when you do your carrots mm -hmm. or your beetroots, yes. those real hard vegetables, it's a nice idea just to parboil those first. That's beautiful. And look, I think you'll agree, Mike, it makes a fabulous centerpiece. This, this took like a couple of seconds to do. This is beautiful. And do, you know like what, do you know what I get asked an awful lot is about these shapes down here? Now, I tried to make this once with a knife. Try to cut these little V forms up and down, up and down with a knife. It's impossible. You pull it apart and it's a mess. Show us well, how to do right, that. that's right, Mike. You know, with a knife, you, the two ends never meet. You mm -hmm. can't get them the right shape or size. That's why we manufactured 
the Chef Secrets Food Decorator. Uh -huh. It does the job for you. Okay. Just watch. I'm going to do a tomato here, a tomato. It could be <laughs> radish. I'll get it right in the end here. It could be radishes. It could be glacé cherries or grapes. You uh -huh. could be decorating cakes or trifles or puddings or doing a fresh fruit salad. And one thing that you're guaranteed to get, can you see this, is that perfect result each and every time Look you do that. the job. The little V's automatically meet each other. Absolutely. And that's pretty good. See the way we did the tomato there, Mike? Say you're doing grapefruit for breakfast. Oh, that's nice. What about the peaches? And this, do you like the way we did the strawberries for cakes and flans and this puddings? This looks like a fine restaurant would serve. This is beautiful. It's, and the kiwi. Look at this kiwi, beautiful kiwi. Now, can I nice? show you something here, Mike? Uh -huh. So that you actually have the kiwi stand up straight. What you're going to do is this. Mm -hmm. You're just going to cut the end from your kiwi this way right and the end this way and you do that before you use the before the v you use the little v cutter that's okay. right remember we call this one the chef secrets food decorator ah. and i love kiwi fruits i think they taste beautiful and they certainly look delicious just watch as we pull the two ends apart here doesn't that look fantastic that's beautiful and look Look at this. When you set it down here, it doesn't wobble. It sits right down there. This is what a beautiful display. But you know, I've been waiting for you to show me how to use the world's smallest juice extract. Remember that little juice extract? That's right, Mike. Show us how and slow down because i got to see how you do this. This looks too good to be true. Well, Mike, I mean, I know you sold a lot of big, expensive fruit juice extractors. Well, yeah, I mean, we have a lot. Well, this is a small juice extractor and it's inexpensive and it's certainly the world's best juice extractor. Okay. See what happens here? You see mm -hmm. these teeth here? Uh -huh. at the end. What they do is they cut into the tough skin of an orange, a lemon, a lime or a grapefruit. Mm -hmm. Now as you screw the juice extractor down into the fruit, you're severing every segment inside. And it has little screw threads. Look That's at that. Right. You see like what that. happens now? Up oh, pops the juice. Now you can drink the juice That's fresh. Straight from the fruit. <laughs> it couldn't get fresher than that. The children love these, Mike. They take them to school. Why would they drink juice out of cartons when they can drink it straight out of the fruit? You squeeze again, you get more juice. So a good idea would be to pack a, an orange plus the little juice extractor in a child's lunchbox. Fabulous idea, Mike. And you know in the mornings, if you like fresh, fresh grapefruit juice, mm -hmm. how could you get it any fresher than that? Just right out of the that. grapefruit. Isn't oh, that look at that. Fabulous. That's nice. Grapefruits and lemons the same way. Mm -hmm. But don't make the mistake that one lady made. What was that? She went and screwed her juice extractor into an apple. She gave the apple a squeeze. She thought she might get cider. No, it doesn't work like Mike, that. Mike, no, you'd need the grip of a gorilla. What I actually said to you was, you screw it into an apple that way, then you screw it into an apple this way, and do you see what happens here now? Oh, yeah. You can actually core an apple as clean as a whistle. That's, it took a couple of seconds. I mean, I tried that with a knife. I tried that with the metal coring things. It never turns right. out right. You get a perfect result every time. Look at that. Not one seed. That's perfect. Very good. Okay. It's How about the coleslaw recipe? We all want the restaurant <laughs> coleslaw. What? My granny's fav famous coleslaw recipe. I'm going to let you know now. It's really simple. All you need. Now, you're going to want to write this down. Now listen carefully. This tastes great. You need a half a red cabbage. You need a half a white cabbage. Half a green pepper. Half an onion. Okay. You need one medium-sized carrot. Okay. One teaspoon of caraway seed. Oh, that's unusual. Caraway seed. And half a cup of mayo. And you can substitute for non-fat mayonnaise if you're on a diet, that's right? That's right. And the same because you need sour cream. A half a cup of sour cream. And you can use non-fat. They taste great. And Mike, you need two tablespoons of lemon juice. And I bet I know how you're going to get and the lemon there juice. There it is, Mike. Lemon juice straight from the lemon. What could be fresher than that? All right. Well, I got to taste gonna this. you're going to make a fabulous coleslaw. Well, put it together. I got to try this. Let's have a look here, Mike. Well, there's our red cabbage, Mike, and I want you to do a little bit of work for me here now. Sure. There's the carrots. Mm hmm And here we go. We're going to put... Look at the colors. It's beautiful. Isn't this beautiful? This took seconds to make with the super slicer. And Mike, what I want you to do here... Okay. I want you to start doing a little bit of mixing for me. Just put it in there. And Mike, mm -hmm. don't worry yourself too much here because remember... Okay. What's that? It's a bit of a cookery show, this one, Mike, and I got one ready. Oh, you got it all ready. I got it ready for you, Mike. <laughs> I could have done this. Come on hey, listen, now. Mike, we're going to give that to the crew later. You just have a little taste of that, and I promise you, oh, you'll find is... it's the finest coleslaw. Oh, by the way, Mike, I oh, like a little bit of black pepper in perfect. mine as well. A little mm. bit of black pepper. Mm. This is this tastes just like restaurant. It's fabulous. Just like that famous chicken place makes. This is really good. 
It's the best Charlie post McClay, you're ever gonna get. Thank you very much. This is truly easy to do. You saw it in my own kitchen. And by the way, if you at home have any recipes that you'd like to share with people, you can write us at Ask Mike. P.O. Box 470, Hollywood, California, 90078. Or, even easier than that, send us a fax at 310-FAX-MIKE. Until next time, I'm Mike Levy, and remember, you can get everything you want out of life, but you have to ask. Thank you, Charlie. It's been a challenge.